Tuchel gets his first win as Chelsea beat Burnley convincingly. Caneless Spurs hit the panic button with an uninspired loss to Brighton. And Liverpool are back in form with a clinical win over West Ham. We down here in the Rat Tail Bunker and Barbershop Studio, and this is the Boys and Bolos Podcast. Welcome back to the Boys and Bolos Podcast. It is the end of week 21, my friends. What are your thoughts on week 21? Well, Chelsea beat Burnley, so we won Ooh. the Champions League. Yeah, you did, a, you did a good job. Burnley sitting in a nice 16th place. A cool 16th. But Spurs lost to Brighton today, so and they're in 17th. Well, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Chelsea still hasn't beaten, I don't believe, somebody will correct me, looking at the table, I don't believe Chelsea's beaten a top 10 team this year. Still. Did they week beat, 21. Did they beat Leeds? We beat Leeds, but Leeds, in tw- Leeds is in 12. Did you beat Southampton? No. No. Did you beat Arsenal? No. They beat us. It was dark days. First win under Tuchel? First win under Tuchel, which is good, because February is going to be absolutely ridiculous. I obviously am a Chelsea fan. You're a Spurs fan. But I was looking at some of the scheduling today. It is out of control. I'm just looking at Chelsea's. Chelsea's upcoming games because they're starting to get in the Champions League. We have to play Luis Suarez, who's untouchable right now. I don't like it. Madrid. I don't like it. We have to play. I think there's a FA Cup game it's in FA there, Cup, uh, and there's about four league games and the back and forth in Madrid. Week, second week of February is the FA Cup. We <laughs> Champions League starts back up. Europa League starts back up. It's in the league, and then they're going to j- jam in a bunch of league games. It's not a good time to have injuries. And with that right there, Spurs are without Kane. Boned. <laughs> without Regulon. Spurs are boned. Without Regulon. <laughs> Jesus. With Jose Mourinho picking the worst lineups he could possibly choose every week. If he doesn't have, honestly, if he doesn't take, if he doesn't win the next two league games and if he loses the FA Cup game, which is against Everton, which they'll probably lose, he's gone. There's no, ch- there's, he's gone. They're going to get rid of him because they get rid of every coach. They don't, it's Daniel Levy sucks. He's the, he's a terrible, terrible, terrible owner. Is it Levy or is it Mourinho? It is Levy. Owner, Mourinho, none of these players are from our Mourinho's picks. And the Mourinho's picks, the one that he picks that he wants, are the, the players that are playing well. Which are? Hoybier. Solid. Uh, that's it. <laughs> oh my. Oh, maybe, God. maybe, maybe, maybe Regulon. Was Bergwin not his? Bergwin was not his. his. Bergwin was Poch? But Ber- he no, Bergwin was Levy. Bergwin was Levy. Was Bale Levy too? Bale was Levy. Bale what? was bring a player in to sell some jerseys. What about Vinicius? <sighs> Vinicius may have been we don't I don't know. I don't know about Vinicius, but he could have been a, a, a Mourinho thing. That I mean he scored in other the other competitions. It's interesting. Look, I think that Jose is gonna get the the boot. He's gonna be the second manager fired. Third manager replaced this season, right? We have Third manager. Sam Allardyce got, got in to West Brom. Yep. Tuchel. For, and for then Jose is going to do the third. Especially because I've heard that there's been some very unhappy players at Spurs under Jose. I mean. It sounds did. like that's also the case. And we're obviously going to talk about other teams tonight. But Jeff and I have had an interesting roller coaster of a ride with our teams. But I've heard the same thing. So we had Serge Aurier, which I think you're about to mention in Tottenham. And then all I hear is all these things about Rudiger basically being a shithead behind the scenes, talking to other agents, other coaches, other clubs when he's not supposed to. And this is obviously in the turmoil under Frank where he wasn't getting any playing time, which I think is right, and that's fine. I don't know. There seems to be a lot of un- unease, a lot of tension in locker rooms around many of the clubs right now. And I wonder just how much of it has to do with their professionals – most professional soccer players don't necessarily have the social developments that most people have because they literally have gone to school since the time like they were eight in like, you know, school has been a second thing. Like soccer has been a first thing. So when players act out and they're 22 and they're millionaires and I think their social development has been stunted, I'm normally like, okay, but now I'm wondering how much of this, and obviously Rudiger and Aurier are a little bit older than that, but now I'm wondering how much of this has to do with the pandemic and how much to do has to do with the overall stressful environment 
than it must be to be a professional in the English Premier League during the pandemic. Now, this is not to say that you or I wouldn't go take a job. If they're like, oh, you want to go play for Aston Villa? I'd be like, sure. You want to go play for any of the teams? You want to go even down and play with Fulham? I don't care. I would love to be a professional soccer player. I'm just saying, this year compared to all the other years and the atmosphere and not having fans, but the pressure is still the same. Some of them are probably going to start to get pay cuts, especially as next year starts with the pandemic's finances and the overall global economy being hit four times as hard as it was in 2008. I wonder how much that has to do with attitudes off the field. Yeah, there's a, there's definitely a level of, uh, I would say, uncertainty, especially because they basically were planning on bringing fans back in. They dabbled in bringing fans back in, and now they're they're under lockdown in, in the UK. So there's no there's no fans on the horizon, right? And so teams are strapped for cash. I'm, I'm sure the reason why we don't we haven't seen a lot of activity in the transfer market this this window is because teams just don't have any money to spend on players. And so players that would normally be able to make an exit during January, they can't go anywhere. They're stuck. Most players are stuck where they are. They were thinking maybe they could, you know, behind the scenes talk to another club, put, put the voice in somebody's ear about going to another club. And maybe that's back, backfiring on some on some of these players. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. Spurs need a player. Spurs need a center uh, center midfielder, and they need a center back. And it's unless it happens in the eleventh hour Monday morning. I mean Monday. It's just not going to happen. They're stuck with this team. It's barely going to get them in top six if it does, if at all. Kane's going to come back in a couple of weeks, and you know Regulon will come back in a couple of weeks, and you know they'll win a bunch of games and they'll be fine. But will Mourinho survive these next couple of weeks? That's the question. And will another coach come in and be able to get these players to play for him? And it seems like people are tired of of Jose. I think I think the big thing that people forget is that if there were sixty thousand fans in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium watching this the football that they're playing, he would be. He would be heckled. He would be screamed at. He would be basically screamed off the pitch because they're playing so poorly. That would not fly in a in, in a stadium that of that caliber because it's it's garbage. When you have, I mean, I know they were playing they were playing away today at uh, the um, American Express, whatever at Brighton. <laughs> I don't even know what they call it. It's fucking Brighton Hope Goal Stadium. Yeah, uh, goal. I, I actually don't know the name of it. Either. But anyway, when they were playing at home against against Liverpool, that was. I mean, the second half was shambolic it was bad and they played two halves of shambolic soccer today it just wouldn't fly with with fans in the stadium it just wouldn't fly and i th- so jose's been given a long leash in the pandemic he's gotten to a cup final so you can say that but it's the carabao cup papa john's cup whatever you want to call it and they're not going to make they're not going to win that cup against man city in this type of form so I and mean, if you look at the table look at man city uh last five games win 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 game in hand three points clear I think in normal circumstances, Jose's potentially fired if what you say holds For true. Sure. The FA Cup to Everton and the next two games dropped in the league. Just because they're getting to a point where they're going to start to get around 10th or 11th if that happens. And Chelsea and Everton and Aston Villa and Arsenal and Southampton win. And those are all teams that are winning or getting points or not dropping points and are starting to really score goals. I know Chelsea, you know, you could say, okay, we have these two wing backs scoring after like three years and not playing. I think, though, Jose has pretty good security. And that's just because there's not another major coach that can come in. Tuchel was like the only guy who was kind of out there. I think Mancini was kind of out there floating, but Tuchel was the only guy. So the second he got knocked out of PSG and they brought in Poch, that allowed Chelsea to say, at least we got this guy. We can bring him in. There's a lot of German connection there. Pulisic has played for him before, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think that there's a good coach or a good fit right now for Tottenham. This summer there may be, but I guess what I'm saying is, Tottenham with or without Mourinho, do you think they're better at the end of the season? I, I just don't know. I mean, no. watching them play is really painful because they're parking the bus. But like, okay, they're doing what Mourinho's done all of his year, all of his career classically, but they're trying to do what Mourinho did with Inter, where you basically play a 5-4-1 and you leave a guy up top. But the guy that we're leaving up top with Inter was Samuel Eto or Diego Melito. Guys who are just unbelievable strikers who are as good as Kane, but a lot quicker. And they don't have that now. And so he's trying to, I, I guess he's trying to make the same recipe and he's got a completely different list of ingredients and he's hoping that the cookies taste great and they're dog shit. But I also don't know if, if a change in coach will help because we've seen historically over the last couple of years when Harry Kane is out, the expected points per game that Spurs are going to pick up is probably halved. 
Right. If maybe they go into the game, they're like, all right, we're going to get, if we get 1.8 points per game this season, we can get Europe, which is really great. They probably go into a game without Harry Kane. That's like 1.1. That's their expected. Hmm. Because they're just not scoring. Like you, you made one of the most intelligent points about Son that I'd never seen because I love Son and I've always said if I was going to start a team, he's one of the guys I'd go to first because I just think he's so great. Son without Kane, he's nothing. And I don't. That's like a harsh statement because Human Song's like a, a beast, but he's really lost when he doesn't have somebody to like link up with. He just looks like bad. So they need to bring in a coach. That's going to probably mix some things around. But this is a team I think that needs to play, which is the comment that you shared me, which is like, hey, at least if we're going to lose, let's go out losing like leads. Let's lose four to three. Let's lose five to four. Let's at least make it entertaining and, and attractive for our fans rather than losing these one goal games, which are just painful. I agree. I think that if you bring in any coach, he's not going to suddenly be able to get all these players to start firing. It's an owner problem as well. Not willing be willing to spend the money that you that you should be spending on if you're a top six club on big players to fill roles that will be dumb not bringing in bruno fernandez when they could have brought in brought him in not be willing to not be heckling about you know five million ten million transfer fee on, on a jack Grealish. it's it's baloney it's it's garbage and then you bring in you bring in like a couple of a players that you think may work out, and it's just they obviously haven't pinned down like a Doherty and and Vinicius, and they may be okay. They were okay at their other clubs, but they're you're at a top six club. You're at a club that you need to you need to be one of the best players in in the Premier League at that position. That that's what the the fans expect when you when you bring when you build a brand new billion dollar stadium, have all this press about how great you are. Like you, the you social get to media, the final of the, the Champions final League, Champions League, Champions League, and then you. You bring in dog shit players. You bring in, you bring, and I don't mean dog shit. I mean, they want to be a top six, cl- six club, but they, they're only willing to spend like a mediocre, like mid table club. So, what would the subs, subs, excuse me, what would the transfers have been that you would have bought? You could say one or two players that you would have bought before this season that would have made the difference that were up and available. And I asked that from curiosity because I just don't think that there was a lot out there Grealish. for sale. They could have got Grealish. They could have got Grealish if they pushed a little harder. Yep, they could have got Grealish if they were willing to spend an extra. I don't. I think it was like ten million or something like that. They could have got Grealish. They also uh, didn't get Bruno Fernandez over the line. And I know. I, I I definitely know they could have gotten Bruno Fernandez. I read that they were going for Grealish when they didn't get Grealish. Then they tried to get Fernandez. Either way, it it's it, it came down to like Levy being just a. A, a complete shrewd jackass and just him not willing to budge on price. And I think that's what it's coming down to too with perhaps with um, Christian Erickson, bringing him back. No, I don't think him, he's the answer. Like, I don't think that they should bring him in. I, it's not my opinion that they should bring him in, but again, it's, it may not happen because Levy doesn't think that it's worth it. This and that after making, a solid 15 million on him last season during a, a mid-season transfer. Christian Eriksen during the Leicester game that I watched today, the Leicester Leeds game, which was I, I thought it was a great game. They were talking about how Brendan Rodgers wants to bring in somebody else because Trap is out. Is that right? Am I right on that name? Yeah, the player I was thinking about was Pratt because Pratt is currently out on injury. They were looking at Eriksen as a solution because Brendan Rodgers wants to bring in another attacking player because. I don't think, well, obviously today's a really bad example, but I don't think Brendan Rodgers is so worried about his defense. Obviously, like any defenses, they'll have their lapses. Today, they gave up some goals. I thought Leeds looked phenomenal. Patrick Bamford hits a worldie. Then they get caught basically with their pants down off a corner kick and a counterattack. When they're pushing forward, that happens all the time. He wants to bring in another 10 to kind of balance out Madison. I think he also realizes that if Vardy's not going to be scoring, they need to find a lot of creativity out of the midfield. And he was looking at Erickson to bring in, which I think Erickson in the Premier League is great. I think... If Erickson wanted to stay at Spurs and actually play, that would have been better for Spurs. They wouldn't even have to sell him. Erickson wants 300000 a week. And when Rodgers found that out, he's like, absolutely not. That's an asinine amount of money for a guy who really hasn't played competitive football now in a year. Because he was on loan all last year with Inter Milan in the spring, didn't do anything, didn't get any time, barely featured. And then all this fall, he, he really hasn't played that much. And now Milan's trying to get him off the books again. I do think, going back to what you said about the transfers that you would have made, they should have put more money down on Grealish, or they should have got gone in a lot harder in Fernandez. Those were always things that they were going to need. They needed a 10, and they needed a center back. The, the last thing, I know that they were dickering around on buying Skriniar from Milan. And I know it came down to maybe a difference of like $5 million, $10 million to 
to get screenier. Look, if they had gotten screenier, this team would be a completely different team. Yeah, because then Dyer's in the midfield, and it's a completely different team. If Dyer, if Dyer can move up in the midfield and he actually plays Toby, it's a completely different game. The not getting either a center back or a center midfield, there's just a massive gap in that entire thing. Like, And Dombele looks great, but he can only do so much. He can only do so there's much. There's no creative player in the midfield to move the ball from the defense up into the uh, to the forwards. And honestly, a game like today, you I would have honestly rather have seen Winks play. And I'm not a huge Winks fan. I think that like the you're, guy can. You're, you're not. I didn't know that. Yeah. You? I mean, honestly, the guy the guy would have at least tried. Him and Hoybier would have at least like tried to move the ball up. And yeah, he makes some. He he fucks up sometimes. Yeah. Okay. But at least sometimes he like at least tries to like look up and and make a creative pass. And sometimes a creative pass is dog shit because he's Winks. But at least he's trying. He's not passing the ball. I mean, he'll make backwards passes and side passes or whatever. But. The guy's improved at least enough to get some playing time. And especially when you have such a dog shit performance in the first half, you gotta put him on you gotta put him out there. The second half was better. It was slightly better. They still almost got scored on Toby like saved save, it was a save, a save of the week. It save was the, the, the Pushka save of the week. Let's move on. I Spurs Spurs are going to be one of those teams that always they're always gonna be Spursy. They're always gonna every week it's gonna be like who who needs to be taken out to pasture. I thought starting Sanchez was the craziest fucking tactical move you could do because he's dog shit. Speaking of taking out to pasture, this past week, the boys and bulls were wrong in almost every single game. We didn't call one pure game. When I mean a pure game saying team A is going to beat team B by this goal line. We didn't get one of those right. I'm fairly certain. And as I look through, it was really painful. Callum Wilson comes out, scores in Everton. They win two nothing. Crystal Palace beats Wolves. We thought Wolves was going to win. We thought Everton would beat Newcastle. Man City, I literally said, I thought Man City was going to take Sheffield out behind a proverbial shed and with a mini baseball bat <laughs> basically beat the life out of Sheffield. I, but I said... And you said, no, 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 because you're Blades, baby, till you die. And they almost tied that at the end. It's honestly... So we got that one wrong. The West Brom foam, we said foam would win. They tied that game. Scotty Parker was super happy that foam tied who's doing cartwheels on the sideline arsenal manchester united if you're a manchester united fan casey if you were listening to this how do you even watch big games anymore because i take this 90 minutes and i add it on top of the 90 minutes with the liverpool game and it's basically asmr i can fall asleep now (laughs) it was so so bad and like i came over i sat down I think like your grandparents had like the baby's grandparents had the babies like warm there wasn't a lot of baby action we could focus on the game and it was just like a snooze fest. I could have gone to like a monk, like a temple in Nepal. Was, that was a two week, was like, like no talking. And it would have been more of, exciting than that. Total of like four shots on goal the whole time. Oh my God, time. burn my eyes out. And then Southampton Villa, I think we said Southampton was going to win. And let's be real, they should have won that game. They looked pretty good. Southampton looked better. They they had more, more of the ball. Also... <laughs> Aston Villa got away with a handball in the box. That was a clear handball. I don't know what was going on. There. I don't know how that. They ma- looked at it with Maddie Maddie Cash too. caressed that ball. <laughs> Maddie Maddie Cash violated the ball. <laughs> it went up this like dude. His it rolled down like, his entire forearm. It was, it was unbelievable. Actually, you know, I think our pure call was. I think Chelsea. I think we had them winning two nothing over Burnley. The other thing about the Southampton game is the in the, like the last minute, like ninety third minute, they got a they they should have equalized, but like VAR somebody's butt. Our, one of the Aston Villa players butt kept I thought kept him on sides but his like apparently like his like the flapping of his sleeve it, it was his armpit hair it was <laughs> it was offside it was offside so I was like okay well that's it that's something Leicester leads we thought Leicester would win that one and well and then the Liverpool West Ham game you know the crazy thing about Liverpool when Liverpool lose a game I swear to god the world's like oh, oh they're, they're done they yeah. can't score goals and then they'll win today and all the liverpool all the stuff at least i see via social media because we're in a pandemic we all live on social media is like oh they're back and it's like most a lot like if you follow 433 on instagram it's the most ridiculous thing they literally had a pyramid built through anfield <laughs> like he's just like it's most of like the pharaoh on top yeah and they have all these pharaoh things and he's like riding horses and it looks like putin when he's on top of the horse it's just so ridiculous and then finally the spurs brighton hope game and so out of this week, what was the most surprising? Because there, were, I think there were a lot of surprising score lines. I think the Leeds game was the most surprising. Honestly, they you were with the Leeds? Leeds over Leicester because Leicester was sitting in second. 
or third. No, they're sitting in third. And I just thought that Leicester was going to be able to hold them to one goal. You know, I- and so you know, was back, and they looked okay. The first goal that gets scored, okay, that goal gets scored. But like I said, the second goal, Patrick Bamford, worldy, he took it, he took it well. And then the third goal was a counterattack goal off a corner kick, which happens. They got caught out. They score a really nice goal. Bamford sli- slides it to Jack Harrison. I am actually more surprised by the Everton. I know we give them a lot of shit. We call oh, them Shampton. Yeah, but I they lost 2 they nothing lost, to, to Newcastle. They didn't they score lost. a goal. That was surprising to me. It was it was it was two nothing, but the score was really for the mo- majority of the game one nothing. And then Everton were pressing and pressing and pressing and Newcastle counterattacked in like the last minute and scored a second goal. But yet, regardless, they, the, the, I mean, they outplayed them. <laughs> Newcastle outplayed them. You think they did? Uh, if they didn't outplay them, they did. It wasn't like it wasn't like Everton outplayed them and they got lucky. It was because Everton had sixty percent of the possession. But it's interesting. Newcastle actually had more shots, right? And the same amount of shots on target. Yeah. So Newcastle, I think, were just more efficient with yeah. when with the possession of the ball. I didn't think Everton looked particularly, especially Calvert Lewin. He didn't look ever since that initial couple months. He just has kind of fallen off. Now I say that, and he'll now score, go score like fucking hat trick. Yeah, week. I mean, I try not to talk about Champton FC too too much because then they 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 like destroy. So well, let's look ahead because we have week twenty two coming up, and in week twenty two, in the halftime of the Tottenham Chelsea game, because our teams are finally playing each other again, which is going to be a, I don't know, battle of who cares less. We're going to have, during that game at halftime, we're going to have a live with Evan Chung, who was one of our guests last year at the beginning of this season. I'm not sure if we'll do that Facebook Live or we'll do IG Live. Anyways, we'll he does a lot of know. IG Live. So I think he does a lot of IG Live. I think we'll do IG Live. Instagram Live. Okay. But let's look at week 22 because it's honestly a shock that we're kind of at week 22. You know, it's like we schedule all these guests. We have guests coming up and people are like, oh, why do you schedule us four months out? I'm like, because like life happens and all of a sudden games are upon us. So Sheffield West Brom, this is going to be the Blades don't win this. This is the wooden spoon. This is two midgets fighting in a basement <laughs> with mini bats. I'm obsessed with mini bats. You're just a mini bat guy. I'm I a think mini you bat. You saw that episode of uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia where they were the uh, <laughs> D and the Mac were the neighborhood watch. Oh yeah, and, I know. And Mac pulls out the mini bat. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love that belt. <laughs> well, does he put it in his belt? And he also has the duster. What's the duster? The duster is this huge, long trench coat that he calls the duster. Not in the episode. He have the okay, anyways, it's that. That's where he has the berets, and and he has like the uh, the army pants with like a tank top tucked into the. It's army It's exactly pants. that. That's who I like picture fighting in a basement. <laughs> it's like a fight club, but no one shows up, so it's just two guys scrapping. So who do you think wins the Sheffield West Brom basement fight club? Oh my God. <laughs> it's quite the visual for all you listening uh, at home. <laughs> West Brom two to one. I'm going Sheffield one nothing. McGoldrick bicycle kick from thirty out. And you're gonna say after they win, you're gonna be like, oh, I can't wait till they, they're in the Europa League next season. That's it. <laughs> Jeff predicted. <laughs> Ooh, the next one: Wolves Arsenal. Who do who do you got on this one? Oh, Arsenal. Arsenal's Arsenal's looking well. good. I I was actually surprised they didn't beat Manchester United. I was a little bit disappointed. Wolves lose to Crystal actually... Palace, and then Arsenal's tough for them. That yeah, Crystal Palace loss was I mean, tough. Look at Wolves; they're they're in they're in they're in the bottom of the table these days. If Newcastle win and Wolves lose, and Burnley win, <laughs> Wolves is silently in sixteenth. Sneaky sixteenth. Or if Brighton win too. I mean, they could almost be. They're almost in relegation, hmm. depending on things that happen this week, which is really quite crazy because the table's all over the place. United Southampton. Wh- what do you got on this one? I'm gonna say Southampton. They look good. They they got a little unlucky last game. I thought they they deserved at least a tie at Aston Villa. I'm gonna say one two to one, Harry Maguire. I'm going three Ball one sport. United. I think United are gonna bounce back. No. They've just haven't they haven't had it recently and they gotta start having it. It's that old Trafford. You think you think Mr. Old Man himself, Edison Edison Cavani is gonna Produce the goods. Yeah, I think Mr. AARP, the Uruguayan AARP, I think he's going to come out firing his pension fund everywhere. <laughs> he's got the goods. He's got the goods. <laughs> it's kind of weird that when they traded for him, I assumed he would be like a very peripheral player. And it was kind of like, you know, have that old guy in the locker room to like set Jesse Lingard straight because he's just like on Instagram because he doesn't play. But Cavani's not so quietly now their starter. Yep. 
He's because there. he and Rashford actually makes sense. And Martial's just not doing it. Mason Greenwood, I don't know what's going on with him. Lingard is off to West Ham, which I think is great. I mean, West Ham, God, we're going to get to them. But yeah, I but I take United on this 2-1. No, I said 3-1. I'm going to go 3-1. So I think Southampton's going to win 2-1. to one. Okay. Newcastle, Crystal Palace. This is kind of like a bottom of the table wooden spoonish match. It's as at well. St. James. It's at St. James. I'm gonna still say Newcastle. They're gonna feel a little confident after a, their um two nothing win over Everton, and they're gonna win uh one nothing. I'm gonna go Newcastle as well one nothing. I think it's at home. I think they do have a little confidence out there. Crystal Palace also have some confidence after beating Wolves. I think, but I think being at home, St. James. I'd like to see. I'd also like to see Newcastle win this one. Not exactly a huge Palace fan. Burnley, Manchester City. Oh, God. If Bur- so here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you look at the Chelsea game, before that, Burnley beats Liverpool. Yep. I think that, well, teams, when they plan out the year, like I said earlier, you know, all these teams money ball this. They, you can't say they don't. They literally have a couple of analytics nerds who are like, you need to get 1.6 points per game. To make sure you're in the Europa League. So, uh, you Jürgen, did you hear me? Try really hard against, uh, try really hard against Liverpool, win that game, and then go absolute dog shit against Chelsea. <laughs> and then don't even show up with laces in your cleats because it doesn't <laughs> matter. Because over those two games, we wanted to get a total of two. So I, I really do, I really do think that that yeah. Burnley was like, over these games during this month, we right. need to get this max amount of points, and they're expecting at best to tie Liverpool maybe beat Chelsea, but probably they'll take a tie, so that's two. So when they l- beat Liverpool, Burnley didn't show up to play Chelsea. Chelsea wasn't that good. Burnley just didn't care. But now I think coming back, I think Burnley maybe will care again or maybe want to win again. I still think City are winning this game by two or three goals. <laughs> With that said. With that said, <laughs> City's still- <laughs> bringing the mini bats, dude. <laughs> bringing the Mac mini bats. <laughs> Taking them behind the shed. <laughs> I go city by three like goals, dude. How you give this long explanation. I give this long explanation as to how they're going to get their yes. ass whooped. <laughs> long explanation about like, I'm like, oh, you might pick them to tires. I mean, no, they're going to beat them for nothing. <laughs> Finish him. That is basically what Burnley looks like. They're like in the tunnel and they look like Mortal Kombat. They're like they're all staggering, they're all swaying, and then Guardiola's like, "Finish him, Matalo, yeah, <laughs> kill him now." <laughs> I got City by three goals. Jesus is going to do the Samba. There's no way that Burnley can score a goal because they're going to have to put they're going to put Diaz and and (laughs) Cancelo is going to play again and Stones will be back in there. (laughs) They're just not going to. Anyway, I'm going to go three nothing. Okay, I got City by three goals. Fulham Leicester. This is a game Leicester coming off the loss they just had and they did not look very convincing. I you know I said you can excuse two of the goals that we scored. This is a game that I think Fulham are going to think, hey, you know what? We're at home. We're at Craven. Let's go steal some points. Minimally, let's tie, but let's go for the win. Fulham isn't that bad going forward. It's just their defense is questionable. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tie. A big a big old 2-2 tie. A 2-2 tie. Correct. Okay. Leeds Everton. Leeds coming off the big win against the Foxes. Leeds are very surprising sometimes. They'll surprise you. Leeds is at home. They're Ooh. not good at sin. They're at Elland. Elland Road. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Leeds. I'm gonna, think they're gonna win two to one. So that's about right. Yeah, it's gonna be. No, it's gonna be an awesome game. It's gonna be an awesome game. This is game this for me is the game of the week. Game of the week. Game of the week. Because Everton has two games in hand, and if they were to win those two games, they'd be top four. This is the game. These are the type of games over the next, you know, between weeks twenty two to thirty two where you really jockey and you really start to get close to where your finish is going to be. And if Everton lose games like this, they're just not going to get that top four, which I know Ancelotti and their whole club is hoping that they get. But Dude, they might not even get they might even, they're not even going to get that top six. I mean, they're hoping they're for the top be. four and then if they miss, they'll get top six, but they'll they'll be they'll be only one point ahead of Leeds if they lose to Leeds. I mean, th- Leeds, that's how tight it is. It's super tight. It's ridiculous. Until you get down to the Fulham area. But yeah. Aston Villa, West Ham. West Ham, I want to take a moment. The Hammers are flying high. They're playing really, really well. And they just signed Jesse Lingard, who I think is a guy, if given the right direction, and I don't know if David Moyes is that guy, 
I think he's got a lot of talent there. I honestly don't know why he didn't pan out. He just like from one season to the next was all of a sudden like on the bench. I mean, I think all of last season he scored one goal and it was in the final game because I remember there was a bet with Jesse Lingard score goals like one in a hundred and he scored on the final day and some that's some right. dude like bought a Lambo. Yeah, that's right. But like before that, he was playing well. He's playing for England. Like he was getting call ups. He was getting caps. I don't really know. Manchester United decided to go in a different direction. Obviously, Mason Greenwood kind of tanked him. Martial started to play better. But I think West Ham signing him was probably on the cheap. I'm not actually sure, but I think it was a really great get. I agree. Yeah, I think he deserved to play for another Premier League club, uh, maybe a smaller club where he would get playing time for sure. Whether that pans out at West Ham, I'm not sure. I'm sure he has to get some uh, match fitness because he hasn't really played. It's surprising that at week 22, out of Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Chelsea and Fulham, West Ham is winning London. They're winning London right now in the Prem. It's very true. It won't last for very much longer. I mean, they were playing Liverpool, Liverpool uh, today when they got smacked down. Was that today or yesterday? It was today. It all blends, but it was today. It was today. Uh, they got smacked down by a Liverpool, clinical Liverpool team. Not to take anything away from uh, West Ham, but I mean, Spurs got smacked down by a clinical Liverpool team as well. I don't know if West Ham are as good as they are. I don't know if they're just overperforming a little bit. Maybe a combination of I think they're overachieving. The I think they're I think they're somewhere between somewhere between, like we said, fifth and tenth. And I don't I mean that's a pretty big gap, but in this in this season, I don't think that's that big of a gap. It's a difference of six points, you know. And so f- right now it's a difference of four points, but by the end of the season, it'll be a difference of six points, a couple games. And um, Villa still has the two games in hand, so this is a big game for Villa. Obviously, it's a big game for West Ham too, but who do you have in this game? I honestly think, and you know, I was talking shit about... You um, can't say it's going to be a tie because you've, no, no. you've been getting out of here with ties the whole night. I was talking shit about Ollie Watkins' last pod, and I wasn't really talking Ollie shit. Ollie Watkins, the guy's lucky. The guy's like a coin toss. I didn't say he was lucky. You did. You said it's I lucky said that, it's that he's... lucky, like it's lucky that he's doing well, not oh the God. player is lucky. Oh like God. the team's lucky. I know. I'm dead on the well. inside. I'm dead anyway, on the inside. The he pl- I had to eat my words to say because we, he he was like cutting people up. and like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff was watching the game. He was like riding his bike on his trainer, and I was in the living room watching it, and there was this play where Ollie Watkins like pooped on two dudes and rips it off the bar or something. Thing, and Jeff looks at me and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, guy. He's not just like I didn't say he was bad. I just said it was he got a lucky break getting up into the Premier League. Dude, he's not big. He's not Tom Hanks and big. He didn't like get a coin from like Jafar out of some like thing. I don't know. You're killing me. Unbelievable. Spurs could use some of that luck. Just pluck Can a, you just tell me who you think is gonna win the game? The it's next level when nasty. I ask you these questions. Who do you think is gonna win the game and you can't say a tie? Uh I don't want West Ham to win. Okay, I'm just so gonna go who I want to win. I'm gonna go with fine. Aston Villa. That's not, it's I mean, fine. Villa's a phenomenal team. One nothing, probably. Liverpool, Brighton Hove. It's at Anfield. I don't see a, a way that Liverpool lose or tie this game. So I guess that that means that they're going to win. <laughs> Absolutely going to win. Okay. I'm going I'm to go Liverpool I, by two I hope goals. Shakiri gets another start. Dude, I love Shakiri. Jiren and Shakiri. Human meatball. Human, the best calves in the world. Human cube. <laughs> the Swiss cube. That's his <laughs> new name. Swiss cube. Swiss. Swiss miss. Swiss miss cube. And finally, the Tottenham Chelsea. The showdown they've all been waiting for at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Oh, God. Carrie Hayne. Carrie Hayne. Harry Car- kane <laughs> Uh I'm going to go with Chelsea on this one. And, I, and I have to pick them because Spurs are so bad at home. There's no, it's, not, it's not an advantage. It's, it might be a disadvantage at this point. <laughs> playing in that giant empty stadium. It's like, it must be awful playing in that stadium. It's like built for like an NFL team to play there. It's, it's not like a real football stadium. It's terrible. Uh, it looks so cold, so crappy. And uh, Spurs suck. I mean, that's really what it comes down to these days. Tell us how you really feel. Unless they somehow pull off like an amazing last day of the transfer window and they bring in like... Messi? <laughs> yeah, they bring in Danny Ings and Christian Eriksen and suddenly all their... Pro- in the center and screenier, like and all their and all their problems are solved. But uh, it doesn't look like... We're, it looks like we're going to have to wait until um, the summer transfer window to bring in a player that's going to actually help this team out. But probably won't happen either because Levy's a cheap prick, so... <laughs> And that was your Tottenham Hotspur roundup. <laughs> so what do you what do you got in this? What are your thoughts? I got Chelsea winning. I don't know how. I think Tuchel's I think Tuchel is a change that maybe Chelsea needed. I think players are inspired to to work and kind of play. I mean, I guess what I'll say is the one thing I saw from this game today, and once again, I don't think Burnley was out to play, was that 
Chelsea, the players looked like they were having fun and they looked like they were playing for something. And I have not seen that in a long time. And I, and I don't blame that strictly on Frank. I just think a change of a coach, a change is always going to be good. It could be bad. It could be good. It could be a neutral thing, but there is a little bit of change. And I think Tuchel winning this game at Tottenham will be a huge, I'm in the Premier League. I'm Tuchel. This is what we're going to do. I think he'll probably play a three back because that's the only way he can play Rudiger safely. When he plays him in a four, he's too exposed next to Thiago. And Chelsea, once again, we won with Conte with a three back with a three, five, two with wingers. Like, that is a system that a lot of the Chelsea players can kind of play into. But what it does on the other side is it does limit some of the guys going forward. So I'm not really sure who he's going to choose to go forward. But I would love to see like a Giroud, Pulisic, Werner start. But I'm not really sure because when you play the 3-5-2, you only have you only have two guys up front. So I don't know. I'm not really sure, but I it, think Chelsea will win this it, game and I don't know how. It was crazy about uh when they put when they subbed in James and Christian, the game completely opened up for Chelsea. It completely added a whole new dynamic. Burnley didn't know what to do. They looked way better moving forward. It looked way more dynamic. It just looked way more fluid. And of course, we I say that, and then, and then Aspie scores, and freaking Alonso score. And it's like the cra- It like, was the craziest, craziest thing. thing. When I saw they were, they were they were like nice goals too. They were both upper deck near like just just drips of the ball and. I'm glad he started Mason Mount because you got to show Mason Mount respect because he's been our best player all year long. And then he comes in and he's like, well, I wanted to go with experience first for my first game to like lock things down was what he said. And I'm like, okay, guy, like whatever. I'm glad that he started Mason Mount. You're totally right. As soon as Christian come in to the game, it's just like a night and day change. The one thing that is crazy, aside from Aspilicota scoring, <laughs> is that Jorginho looks oh, decent. Yeah, he looks fine. He doesn't look like this weird, sorry robot that like yep. only plays east to west and never north to south. He actually looks great. He actually looks good. Now, I think Conte is better, but he actually looks good. So that's really, that's been a nice surprise. Yeah. I think Chelsea win this game by one goal. I don't think it's going to be the most exciting game. I think Chelsea will be on the front foot most of it. I think Spurs is going to be happy to sit back in a low block, whether they've scored or they haven't scored. And they're going to rely on the counterattack. It's really going to come down to whether human song and Dombele or Bergwijn can figure shit out. Because if you, they can't, Chelsea, Chelsea can win this game by a lot, too. Because in the last couple of games, we haven't scored a lot of goals. And so, like, I think it's like a, you know, I think Chelsea could, there could be a lot of goals for Chelsea in this game. This could be an ugly game for Spurs. It also could be one of those games where nobody scores. It could be a 0-0. I don't think it will be. I, I don't think it will be. But uh, it could be, it could it be could a 0-0. Be. You're could totally be zero. Right. It could be 1-1. One, one. Honestly... I'll, I'll I've got Chelsea. Considered. I've got Chelsea by two goals. I don't know the score, but I got Chelsea by, by two goals, three to one or two nothing. You got what you were talking about earlier, where like players want to play at pay, play for Tuchel. I think the opposite's happening in, at, at Tottenham. The exact opposite. People are getting sick of playing for the Mourinho Jose. mutiny is on. The Mourinho mutiny, mutiny is on. And I think the only player that like actually wants to play is Lloris and Hoybier, and they are two players that will like they'll just play it because they want to. They just like to compete. I think, and these these other players are like, this guy is an asshole. Like he's just, he doesn't put the best players in the field. I have to go out and like, I'm sure like Son and Ndombele and just they're just like have to play with some of these joke defenders who can't move the ball forward and they like, can't do anything for them. One of the things that was said on Sky Sports, I was watching them banter about something, was that it's really tough to get on a coach about their team selection. Because there's so many things that you don't know. Right. And there's so many things that they know. And one of the things was like, you see a team play on a Saturday and they play with these 11 players. And then they'll play next Sunday and they'll play with only eight of those players and three different players. Players you're familiar with, but it's in a different rotation. Maybe they're going to play in a different formation. And the comment that he made, he was like, as a professional, like people would be like, oh, why didn't so-and-so start? And he played so well last game and he was like, well, you didn't see him all week in training. He was dog shit. He didn't have one good training. So he gave no confidence for the coach to play with what you're saying feeds into that. Because if there's toxicity in a club and we've all played on clubs, I guarantee religion of this podcast, you've had a coach that you really didn't like, or you just didn't believe in and you didn't want to play for conversely. I hope that you've had a coach that you wanted to play for and who's given you confidence. When you don't have that, even the best players throughout trainings, you'll see it. And I saw in college, some of the best players, they just weren't inspired by the coach. They just gave up and they didn't show up. So then the coach wouldn't play them. Not that they're not the best players, but if they're not inspired to train, 
they're never going to want to play. And I think that that's definitely happening with Tottenham. The whole surge, surge or Aurier thing where he's running out of the stadium at halftime, that's the type of shit I expect to see from like a boarding school where like, you know, the coach and the player didn't get along. So he like left. Not professionals. Like, you don't get mad at your boss and run out of the office. You deal with it. Yeah. So I do think this could also be a game where if Chelsea were to win big, the pressure is would then be extremely intense on Mourinho because other things being equal, Tottenham could start to see a way where they're not going to be in Europe. And if they're not even in Europe, it's a problem. And it would also start to seem that the only way that maybe Tottenham gets into the top four or gets into the Champions League is by winning the Europa League, which isn't something that can't happen. But as we talked about the other day, it's going to be more and more difficult because there's so many good teams in the Europa League. Yeah, and you have to go play. You have to play these good teams. You have to you, you, you have, have to have a team that you can win Premier League games. And you have to play on Thursdays, so you're yeah. always tired by Saturday at like noon. Yeah, it's it's there's no way, there's no easy way for Spurs to just get better. It's not a it's not a change of a manager, it's not a bring in a player. There's a serious problem going on at Spurs. I think that the players they when they were winning games and they were winning games with a low block, park the bus, counterattack. It's okay. You can get a, you, like everybody's like, yeah, it's not like my favorite way to play, but we're winning games. As soon as you start losing games, as soon as you stop scoring on that counterattack and being clinical, it's easy to get discouraged because suddenly you're parking the bus, you're absorbing all this pressure, you're never touching the ball, you're just chasing the ball the whole game. It's a shitty way to play football. And people are on you all the time. You don't think that they're on social media. They don't think that they're looking at, at the pundits. They don't think they're watching Sky Sports. You don't think they're seeing all the people say, these. you guys are dog shit. Like, you guys are awful. That that impacts players. And they know, they're, not, they're aware that this shit is happening. And they're aware that Jose is probably not picking the best lineup or he's being questioned on it. So they they pick up on that. And they're like, why am I not playing? This is retarded. This We're not winning games and I'm getting benched. Why? What, that's ridiculous. Jose has the time during Harry Kane to basically not drop more than past eighth. They're in sixth now. If he drops past eighth, he's gone. I'll tell you why. City's had problems all the beginning of the season with injuries. They didn't have forwards. They were playing Kevin De Bruyne as a false nine high up the field. It was a weird thing. Liverpool, they've had tons of injuries. They've had whole games where they're playing with guys who I'd never even heard of before. But they were able to manage those things because their coach was able to figure it out, was able to put in a guy, change a formation, be a little crazy. The fact of like the resurrection of Jiren Shakiri, who never really died, he just wasn't getting PT. It's great to see him there. If Mourinho can't do the same over the next month, during the time that Kane's hurt, if they fall lower than eighth, if they ever hit ninth, I think Mourinho's gone. That's my prediction. Absolutely. He's gone. Because right now they have a game in hand and they're in sixth. So they have a little wiggle room. They just need to win a couple games here, tie the teams that maybe are going to be competitive, keep moving forward. If they lose to Chelsea, which could happen, and they lose then to a team that's bottom, you know, in the in the lower half, and the other teams around them start to win. Chelsea starts to win. Everton continues to win. It's really tough. But anyways, let's look at fantasy because that's that might be a more happy place for Jeffrey. I'm not unhappy. I just I, I've come to peace with it. It's almost like I've come to peace with it. I've come to peace with it. I check Twitter all the time. I'm just like it's a joke, almost like guessing the lineups every week because you know it's going to be dog shit. I mean, the only positive thing this week was that Dyer didn't play. But so, Sanchez played in this place. I... The top three not so special one, Ozatik, is literally taking the mini bat to everyone else in the fantasy. Jesus, Larry, Jason's in second. Swiss Cheese, Justin Stradley in third. So Ankit fell down to fourth. Jeffrey, you are in eighth. I am still holding down twelfth very soundly, even though I'm tied with Eddie. I don't like that. I gotta I gotta jump Eddie. I gotta jump over him a little bit. Then in the bottom, it's the same. Actually, Diego got out of the bottom. So Pablo's in the bottom. The fantasy, by the way, if you win the fantasy, you get Boys and Bulls swag, which will hopefully be up by the time the Biden Bucks roll around. So you know where to spend them. Yeah. Just go. The Biden Bucks might not be coming as quick as we think, though. Oh, they're coming. There's stall. There's some stalls, stalling, stalling going on with the Biden Bucks. You think so? Yeah. It's not a political podcast, but. That's fine. Just put on your credit card and pray. Yeah. Use some crypto, whatever, whatever you're into. Yep. That's well, all that's all we got, Jeff. Yeah. I, I Week twenty two, baby. Spurs Chelsea. Say a little prayer for Spurs. Say a little prayer for the, the uh, last Honestly, day of neither there. team can afford to lose that game. So a tie would a be, tie be fine. Would be okay. A loss on either side. Tuchel, ugh, not good. A loss for Jose, depending upon the style of the loss, at home. Ugh. 
I just think if there's fans out there and they lose the way it's one thing to lose right okay this is what i'm trying to say there's one thing to lose like three to two two to one and like have some possession have some shots on goal create some chances like look positive it's one thing to lose and go out and you you just didn't have it that day it's a whole other thing to not be it to just park the bus from minute one and think that you're going to score goals on teams in the Premier League. Slash the tires. Slash the tires. Let that bus sit. I mean, what are their training sessions? There's not even a goal. Jose's just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just picture a thing out of like dodgeball where he's like, you dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. He lines them up. He's just <laughs> pelting them with like a tennis ball shooter or something. I don't know. I don't he's understand. Just- it, it's so boring. It's so they look to watch. scared to go forward. They look like they always, you know what? They they defend like they have a lead when they're losing. You know what it is? <laughs> it almost feels like they defend. They they play that way so they don't fuck up and they they don't get scored on. Well, even though they do get scored on, but they don't want to risk getting scored on because then Jose will yell at them. Like he'll get mad at them. Jose wouldn't intimidate me though. Would he intimidate you? I mean, at this like point, Sam Allardyce would intimidate me. He wouldn't because the, the dude's like Jose doesn't intimidate like me. But, but I like we've seen him. Like he's just a goof. That's what I'm saying. Why? Why would he intimidate you? But that's how they play. Yeah, you're right. They play like they don't want to fuck up. They just like spend the whole game trying not to fuck up, even though what they're doing at the in, during the entire time is fucking up. Well, Thursday we'll find out. Chelsea Spurs. I mean, Chelsea's just gonna pass. It's gonna be like a passing clinic around Spurs. Oh, no, for sure, it's gonna be a clinic. It's brutal. Well, until next time. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks for listening to the Boys and Bolos podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Twitch, at Boys and Bolos. If you'd like to be a guest, please reach out. You can hit us on any of the social media accounts that Jeff just mentioned or email us directly at boysandbolos at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and see you next time.